In the previous two videos on antennas, we looked at the mathematical methods that we'll use to quantify the operating characteristics of antennas. And what I want to do for the rem uh, remainder of the time that we spend on antennas is to just uh, develop that same math for a couple different types of antennas. So we're going to look at a, a variety of common antennas. We won't. It, this won't be exhaustive. Uh, we won't cover all the types of antennas, but we will look at some of the more common ones. And uh, the simplest, cheapest, and often the most versatile antennas are commonly made, believe it or not, of just simple linear pieces of wire. And in the rest of the lecture, we're going to look at a, theoretic, a theoretical antenna, what's called the infinitesimal dipole. And this will allow us to develop a mathematical basis for antenna operation and radiation. And then we'll analyze, a couple, we'll analyze the most common antenna type, the dipole antenna and the half-wave dipole antenna, uh, very thoroughly. After we do that, we will look at some of the more uh, useful antennas, monopole antennas, Yagi, microstrip antennas, and we won't analyze those mathematically. I'll just present them to you so that you're familiar with their use, um, their characteristics, and um, how you can uh, operate them. Uh, before we begin that analysis, though, I want to introduce a new concept to you that's often used when we characterize antennas, and this is called the concept of the pattern solid angle, often called the, uh, the beam solid angle. So pattern solid angle, you may find it called beam instead of pattern there instead. And this beam solid angle is an angle formed across an antenna pattern in which the radiation is constant and it's equal to the maximum value of the radiation. So you can see here in this picture on the side, what I've done is I've plotted some sort of antenna pattern. You can see it's got a main lobe here and it's got some side lobes and a pretty significant um, rear facing lobe here. And the antenna pattern is, um, or I'm sorry, the uh, pattern solid angle is this red line that I've drawn, or this red shape that I've drawn here. And you can see that across this uh, hypothetical uh, pattern here, the radiation intensity is constant. So the radiation intensity is um, it's equal to the max value of what it was for the true radiation pattern, and here we've just extrapolated it to be that value across this entire um, solid angle. And it, again, it's, it's equal to this maximum value. And it's given uh, the symbol, pattern solid angle or beam solid angle is given the symbol capital omega sub p. And uh, you can imagine that in three dimensions, instead of a, an arc like I've shown here, the pattern solid angle forms a cone, as I've pictured on the right-hand side. And often this pattern solid angle is used to approximate the antenna pattern um, shape here. And we calculate pattern solid angle by integrating normalized power pattern over one full differential solid angle. And so uh, mathematically what that is is that we take the, pa the pattern solid angle is the surface integral, um, which you now know is from the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi, and now we need to integrate the normalized power pattern which is just, we've been calling it P sub N, and in general it's a function of both uh, the theta and the phi coordinates. And then we take that, uh, we're uh, in this in this integral we're integrating over, uh, not over a surface, but over a uh, solid angle, and so we give it d omega. And if you remember from our discussion about the solid angle two videos ago, that is defined as sine of theta d theta d phi, and then um, from one or two videos ago, the normalized power pattern f or the radiation pattern for an antenna, uh, the normalized power pattern is given by um, <clears throat> the power density or the pointing vector divided by whatever the maximum value of the pointing vector, vector is. And so that normalizes that, normalizes that quantity. So here I'm comparing two antenna radiation patterns. In the pattern here on the left, uh, considerable power is being radiated to the side and to the back lobe. Um, the resulting pattern solid angle is therefore large, and as you might intuitively think, it's got, that antenna's got very small directivity. In the pattern that I'm showing on the right, we see that the uh, minor lobes are 
much less significant than they were on in the left-hand uh, antenna, and most of the radiation is therefore concentrated in the main lobe. So almost all the power is radiated into the main beam for this antenna. The resulting pattern solid angle here is going to be small, and uh, of course this antenna has a very high directivity. Um, if the pattern solid angle, if we know omega sub p for an antenna, we can use that to calculate average power, we can use it to calculate directivity, and we can use it to calculate total radiated power. So if we know the pattern solid angle, it makes some of the math that we've done previously a little more simple. So we'll say that, say we want to know what the average power, the normalized uh, average power in the antenna is. Uh, well, that is given as the um, surface integral of the normalized uh, power density function of theta and phi d omega divided by the integral of uh, the surface integral of d omega. And uh, I'm not going to do the math for you here. I'm just going to kind of set it up. We've done a lot of math, and I think we're all kind of tired of it. So uh, we'll keep. We'll try to keep this lecture as math light as possible. So the result of this fraction here is that it's just the pattern solid angle for the antenna divided by 4 pi. The max directivity of an antenna is defined as the same normalized um, power density function But this time we're dividing it instead of um, the, the volume of a sphere here, we're looking at whatever the average value of uh, the normalized power density function is. And uh, that turns out to be just the opposite of this guy, which is 4 pi over omega p. And then finally we have uh, radiated power, total, total power radiated by the antenna. And previously we calculated that as uh, the normalized, or sorry, the uh, uh, power density function, which could also be uh, p max times the normalized power density function. Right? If I if I multiply p max by the normalized power density function, I just get p of r comma theta comma phi. Right? And uh, then this thing gets multiplied by r squared sine of theta d theta d phi. And it turns out that the result of this integral is that the radiation pattern is given, or the total power radiated, excuse me, not the radiation power, total power radiated uh, in watts is r squared times the max power times the pattern solid angle. So you want to remember um, this formula, that formula and that formula. Just knowing those will make some of the calculations that we'll be doing a little bit quicker. We won't have to do all these, we can skip all these integrals.